on air circuits. Uh, this is a curved circuit. You have R air. This is a circuit. Okay. We look at this R air circuit. We have learned RC circuits before. So now we let study it together. First, we switch to connect to electromotive force. And we assume the current in this direction. This is the current we assume. It doesn't matter which direction you assume, okay? The, after you solve the differential equation, uh, if the I is positive number, that means the direction. If I is negative number, that means the real I is that direction, okay? So we assume I is this direction. And under this assumption, the current charge capacity. So this play is positive charge. This play is negative charge. All right? Now we look this one. If we switch to A, we assume a current this ring. And this current goes down. This coil has self-inductance against the change. So this is positive, this is negative, E if so. All right? Now we look at this related equation. Okay. From here, epsilon positive. Minus I R. This is uh, under this assumption, the negative. So we go this one as negative V. V is Q over C. This is a different equation for this circuit. And we look at this one. This epsilon minus I R. I R. This one you see that self induced electromotive force this is positive this is negative so we have a minus air di dt this is a, i is dq dt uh, dq dt so we rewrite this one dq dt equal to q over rc equals epsilon over r and this one we said di dt equal to plus i over air i equal to epsilon over one. They're very similar. Only the difference is the sign, okay? And the initial condition. The initial condition is at the t equal to zero, there's no charge on this capacitor. So q zero equal to zero. In this case, the i, so this one, okay, at the beginning, zero. No current, okay? So, we solve this differential equation with this initial condition. Oh, also this differential equation with this condition, we get the answer. Uh, we know this before. Uh, the Q, the Q in the on the display, you could have CE, one minus E, minus T over RC. What does this mean? Okay, T equal to zero, E zero is one. One minus one, zero. So when time T equal to zero, so no charge with this one. This is, we know that. And when t approach infinity, e minus t is zero, and q equal to c epsilon. C is capacitor, epsilon is the voltage difference, as we know that. Now we look at this one. We saw this one similar. We have e equal to i equal to epsilon or r one minus e minus t r over r. And we rewrite this, we put R in the denominator. So we can write it T over L over R. This is a T over RC. Okay. And then we see the current is di d dq dt. We get this one to the derivative with respect to time t. This is zero, this is minus, minus, you get epsilon RC. You cancel C over R E minus three. What this mean? This means that when T equal to zero, this is a one, and this I is epsilon of R, very large. And then when T approach infinity, this is zero, I reduce to zero. That's the situation for capacity we have learned. Okay, at the beginning I is very huge. Okay, Q is zero, and then with the char charge. So the R getting smaller and smaller, finally I equal to zero. 
and the charge is the maximum C epsilon. Look at this one. We know this one. The electric voltage induced, self-induced, equal to minus uh, DIDT. So, epsilon is DIDT, related to DIDT. We will find that one, okay? Yeah. And this one equal to epsilon minus IR. We can calculate from this one, we get epsilon E to the minus T over L over R. Okay. What does this mean? What this means is when T equal to zero, E zero is one, one minus one is zero, I is zero. So at the beginning, I is not like this, such a wow, huge, that. no. I keeps zero and gradually increase. Until T into infinity, this is, this is, this is zero, you get I, you get epsilon over R, okay? And then E, the E is different. When T equal to zero, this is one. So E error is equal to this very large. This is self-induced electromotive against the change. And I is zero. And then gradually I increase, E epsilon small, until this is zero, this is the maximum epsilon over R. And these two circuits will have this tall equal to RC. This tall equal to L of R. We call them time constant. What does it mean, time constant? Time constant means when T equal to time constant, about two thirds, 67% has finished. Okay. When tall equal to two, T equal to two tall, 95% process has finished. Okay. Now we look at, this is the data, VR, the voltage across the resistor. We know VR is RII. So actually, this shape actually is represent the current situation, okay? And I, we know that equal to epsilon over R, one minus E equal to minus T over L over R, okay? And this is also, R cancel out, epsilon one minus E equal to minus C. We see the current between R because I equal to zero. So at the beginning, T equal to zero, E zero is one, one minus one is zero, V is zero. And when the T approaches infinity, E to the minus infinity is zero. So it, V finally equal to epsilon. Now, the time constant is L of R. Now we look at the voltage across the coil, coil, inductor. We find at the beginning, it's very large because it's related with DIDT. We have I, but DIDT is, look at this curve, is the tangent of the, tangent a slope, okay? Well, this slope, okay, it gets slow and a slow and a slow. So the VL gets slow and a slow and a slow, okay? So VL is equal to epsilon E to the minus T over L over R. When t equal to zero, this is one. Vl is very large because self-index, okay? And when t equal to infinity, Vl equal to zero. And the time constant is tau L. Now, now we see that another system, S switch to, after it finished charge of C, and we switch S to this one, and we switch in this way, we still assume I. I, we can assume either direction, okay? Even though the real direction is the opposite. We just assume it and we do the calculation. We get the same thing, okay? If you assume this one, this is a positive charge, this is a negative charge, and we find uh, this one, we switch B after it long time, okay? We switch this one, okay? Before we switch one, we have a current here. The I is epsilon over R. This voltage drop is zero, right? Now we switch to B, so what happened? First here, uh, uh, we have I, we assume I, also E is this one. Uh, so. Then we see this one is 
from here to here, the minus Ri. I is dq dt. From here to here, minus V. V is Q over C equal to zero. Okay? Equal to zero. And this one, you see, the current minus I R. And this one is, from here to here, is minus L d i d t minus i r equal to z. These two equations are very similar. Are very similar. So we know the answer. This answer q is c t equal to zero. Q q is c epsilon. It was already charged. Okay. And this one we know that. And before it switched one, we have a current. This current is epsilon of r. No drops here because compared to this one, its resistance is very small, almost zero. And then answer this Q is C E over E times T over R C. We did it before. And similar we copy this one. Okay. I equal to epsilon R E times minus T over L over R. This constant tau equal to R C. This time constant is L of R. Now, we prove L of R has a dimension of time, the second. L, the unit is Harry, R is ohm. And we know that, okay, from this equation, we see that uh, Harry ampere equal to volt second. Volt second equal to Harry ampere. And we see that, okay, one volt equal to M ohm ampere. Then we see volt cancel out, ampere cancel out, ohm cancel out, Henry cancel out, we leave second. So L of R is a dimension second, times dimension. Initially, an inductor X to oppose changes in current through it. A long time later, it acts like an ordinary connecting wire. So R of this inductor, at the beginning, when current changes very fast, that means omega is infinity, changes very fast, the R is infinity. For infinity, I is zero. And for a long time of that, it looks like just a wire. R L approaches zero compared to other R. In this one's long time, we don't have a change or make it to zero. Okay. Fig A shows a circuit that contains three identical resistors with resistance R 9.0 ohm, two identical inductors with inductance L 2.0 millihenry, and an ideal battery with electromotive force epsilon 18 volt. What is the current I? So the battery, just after the switch is closed. Now, when just as the switch is closed, the change is a lot. In that case, as we mentioned before, this is, this is infinity. That when it's open. So in this case, the I is epsilon over R. Ah, uh, uh, it's epsilon 18. This R is number 2.0 here. Okay. Now, question B. What is the current I through the battery long after the switch has been closed? We, no we notice that the long after the switch has closed, everything is in equilibrium. Now, this is just a wire, no resistance. So this becomes this one, this wire. So this becomes three identical resistance connect in parallel. Uh, so we replace R over three, connect this one. So in this case, okay, uh, R equivalent is R over three, 3.0. Then I is epsilon over R equivalent, 6.8 ampere. Sample. A solenoid has an inductance of 53 millihenry and a resistance of 0.37 ohm. If it is connected to a battery, how long 
where the current takes to reach half its final equilibrium value. First, we have to know what is the final equilibrium value. We know in LR circuit, the current IL equals Y over R times 1 minus E to the minus T over L over R. What the final equilibrium value? That means T approach infinity and E to the minus infinity is zero. So I infinity is Y over R. Now the question is, this I, what time equal to half final equilibrium value? This is the condition. And this, from this equation, we cancel it out. We get half equal to one minus two C. So it's very easy to find the T, okay? Uh, T equal to L out of log G quality, all right? And uh, we put the number inside, L, uh, 53 millihenry. The unit should be Henry, so you have multiple 10 to the minus three, okay? And we get the time, it's about 0 0.990, about 0 0.1 second. And it is stored in a magnetic field. Well, look at this one. Y equal to this one, equal to IR plus L DIDT. This is one is IR, this is L DIDT, so they are the equal. If we multiply by I on both sides, we get IR equal to I square R plus D half L I square DT. Uh, we rewrite this one. Uh, you do the derivative, you get I L D I D T. Now let's look at Phoenix meaning. I epsilon is the rate, is the power, at which the seat of the electromotive force delivers energy to the circuit. Okay? And I squared R is the rate at which energy appears a thermal energy in the resistor. So this one, D half L I squared DT, is the change rate, what is it? So we see, this one is the rate at which energy is stored in the magnetic field in this quad. Inside you have magnetic field, right? So, this is total U in that coil is half air I squared. The air is the inductance of the inductor. I is the current passes through this inductor. This one represents the total energy store by an inductor air carrying a current I. Know that similarity between the expression and the expression for the energy store by a capacitor with capacitance C and the charge Q is UE equal to half CV squared. Now, air current C, I current V. Okay. Also, we can write this one a half Q squared over C. Okay. Sample. A coin has an induction 33 millihenry and a resistance 0 0.350. Question A. If a 12 volt electromotive force is applied across the coil, how much energy is stored in the magnetic field after the current has built up to its equilibrium value? Now, this is the answer. The current, the time is infinity. So this is a final equilibrium current, okay? And we know this final current equal to y over r. Uh, this is 12 volt over 0.350, 34 34.8 meter, okay? And we see how much energy is stored. This is the potential inside. So, so this is half air. I'm saying we put it on the side. Okay, this is 31 journal. Question B. After how many time constant will half this equilibrium energy be stored in the magnetic field? Now, we know that magnetic field stores the energy, half of it, 
okay is how much time we know this is an energy okay and now question this this is final this is an instant when I and I want to find how much time would make this one equal to have it okay have it so make it equal and what we found is the I this I is one I infinity of square root and I infinity we know that is I over R this is I at any time this I final is epsilon over R square root from this one we cancel out the epsilon over R and we can find the T I don't do it okay the simple uh, mathematics okay. you are better than me okay uh, we find T about 1.2 L over R this is a time constant okay one comes up so how many is 1.2 Now, let's see this picture, okay? When we, after long equilibrium, it turned to B, okay? And when we assume you have I, go this way, let's see, assume, okay? And we will have introduced, okay, electric force going up, this is negative, this is positive. Now, and we know that at the beginning, the I zero is epsilon over R at the T. Okay, because long time is established and we know I is epsilon R over E over minus over L over T and the tau is L over R now let me see how much thermal energy is released in this one because we know that when finally this I is zero all the energy stored in the coil transfer to a heat energy of this R. Let me see, calculate. How much? So DW is, is I squared R of T. This I changes, okay? I is this one, okay? And the total energy is integration. This W is this Q. And we put I into this one, okay? This one is epsilon of R of E to square is r dt integration from zero to infinity zero to infinity i don't know how long time it's actually you don't need infinity right but we theoretically is infinity and do the integration is easy work okay it's easy work and we get you could have a epsilon of r square okay what is this uh, this is a t equal to zero i zero so this is I zero. What do we find? We find that the energy has dissipated at the thermal energy in resist the equal to the total energy store in the coil at the beginning. Okay. In other words, all the magnetic field energy is transferred to heat energy in the R. 